Well, hello, boys and girls. It's when I feel like it o'clock. I'm Pearl of Wisdom, and you're listening to my NHL Pearls of Wisdom. I got to change these to we's and ours because we are doing this constantly together. These are two of the finest in the land. Uh, we have Steel Flyers and uh, Pro Joe, I like to call him, Professor Joe Boric. Fantastic. Uh, we have been doing a series on uh of course the second round here right right guys uh bought we did the boston uh series last and uh we've did uh the dallas series as well dallas tampa bay For, don't forget about the other teams and uh they've been fantastic you guys have been watching it's great subscribing hitting the bell and all that stuff like that and we love you for it commenting down there frolic is endless so we're gonna get into another one today why not might as well Playoffs are happening right now, and they've been amazing. This one here that we're getting into now, uh, from what I'm hearing, everybody is like all a flutter about this one. Vancouver and Vegas Golden Knights. These are just as two fast teams. Uh, not really contrasting styles here. This is why it's so so awesome. Uh, this this kind of reminds me maybe back to the 80s and 70s. A Steel Flyers, like this, does this give you that kind <laughs> little, of feel? Like little run and feel, gun. The old Islanders, yeah. Edmonton Oilers type stuff yeah. like that. Yeah, like the what old run and gun days. Yeah, no <laughs> doubt. So what, what are you what are you looking at here with this uh, series, Steel? Steel. Well, first of all, thanks for having me on, man. It's uh, always a pleasure being here with uh, the professionals. Um, you guys are the standard, and and if you guys aren't following um, Joe and you're not following Perlo, then you should be because you're missing out big time. So thanks once again for having me, man. Always a pleasure. Um, I'll tell you what, yeah, it does kind of give that vibe, you know, of of the old run and gun days where it was just back and forth hockey, you uh -huh. know, and I'm looking forward to this one, honestly, because Vancouver just stepped up and took care of business. You know what I mean? They just they said, no, St. Louis, uh, we're, we're just going to take care of you. And, and, and I was, cause I completely, I utterly picked St. Louis and I completely lost my rear end on that. So that's why I'm not the prognosticator and, and the pearls of wisdom is the prognosticator. Okay. So I lost my hiney on that one, but I really liked how Vancouver came out and played. They, they, they showed a lot of scoring depth. They have um, guys up, up and down their roster that, uh, look like they're putting together a really good team, uh, and and everybody's you know the darling team, the, you know the the Vegas Golden Knights, and here they are, what this third year in existence now, and they're fighting for a berth to go to the conference final. You know what I mean? And so you just got to give it up to that, okay? Um, also, we've sprinkled in a little controversy now because of the tweets that went out about a certain goalie playing for a certain team, the Vegas Golden Knights. Uh, and everything that I've read so far says that he's supposed to remain on the team. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, I think this is going to be a major effect on this series with the fact that the timing that this came out and everything that was said about it and everything that's going on with it, I think that's going to have a major effect on this series because they need Fleury to be the guy to backstop this team. OK, I, I, I'm not saying that, they, you know, that their backup goalie isn't good enough. I'm not saying that at all, but I don't even know who to pick. Honestly, I, I, I don't even know who to pick. I'm just going to call it seven games and whoever's the last one to win. I don't even know who to pick, quite honestly. I, to me, I see too much even match. I see too much scoring depth. I see goalies that stepped up. I see both teams that have got good momentum coming into this series, both beating teams that, you know, maybe they weren't expected to beat or whatever the case is. And so I think it's a wash. I, either one, either one. I mean, I'm going to lean towards Vegas, but either one. Yeah. Well, All the right. flurry thing, um, I think the reason his agent did that is because the writing's on the roll. Your guy's not the star. Writing is on the wall that your guy's not the starter anymore. Um, where that is nice support. It's very, um, I don't know, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, over the top, I guess. <laughs> yeah, that's um, a good one. But if I was a player that was thinking with Andy Walsh, 
oh, I need a new agent. Who do I want as my next agent? That would probably give him more grace points in my book than, oh, I don't want that as much because it knows no matter what, he's always going to have my back. I could probably be having a terrible season and he'll be like, nope, 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 nope. This guy should not be getting this type of like, yeah. and he tweets about his players all the time. So uh, he's a guy that I think I would want to have as an agent. It's just what I, I saw um, all the reports and stuff and been following that. As soon as they talked to Flower, they said he was like, no, we're good. Uh, like it was like a pretty painless conversation. It was pretty much, yeah, we're good. Uh, <laughs> and then they yeah. moved on from there, where I yeah. think it was either his agent just did that to support his client and didn't run it through his client and then that's a little bit of an issue if that's the case but maybe flurry just doesn't care uh or he did and thought it was more of like a meme and a fu- and mark andre flurry thought it was gonna be more of a funny thing and then it blew up more than he thought it would i it could be one of those couple things or it could be flurry just finally saying hey i'm towards the end of my career let me put myself out there a little bit more to to show that I want, I still got it. I can still do stuff for a team, which we know he does. And right, yeah, go somewhere else. Maybe he was just. You're, we're talking about a meme where it has the coach putting a sword through his heart or something like it's, that. It's right? a just, sword that says De Boer on it. It yeah. doesn't need the coach doing. It. It's just a big sword that says De Boer on it. Because yeah. breaking breaking his heart. Yeah, yeah. You're killing him. You're killing him. <laughs> but he well, did yeah. come out and say. I mean, Flurry did come out and say that he was a little bit upset at his lack of playing time. Did oh, he that... did. But he also um, has talked about how much he supports uh, right. Renner and all this. so. Like, I think it's like a double. It's a backwards thing where I think it. I think it's yeah. like a two way thing where his agent might have tweeted something thinking he would be in favor of it and made it not ran it by him because of how he's been talking. But you never know with these things because it never comes out exactly what happened. But the reason I think I give Vegas the slight lead is other than one game, they've been cruising the entire playoffs. Vancouver's been cruising the entire thing, but they still other than three games. So that's yeah. still two more games. So that's why I'll give Vegas a slight uh, lead there, especially because if we're talking about the goaltender matchup, I would still have to give it to Vegas because if Flurry ends up playing, he's probably going to play like a bat out of hell because he's getting put in when he's annoyed already. He's going to have that adrenaline going if that's the case. Uh, and Flurry's usually not a guy you want to be around as an opposing team when he has all that going. But either way, Leonard's doing really well. And you have Markstrom, who's a great matchup over there in Vancouver. But if something were to obviously, God forbid, happen to Markstrom in the series, like something happened with Grubauer last year. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Not going to, I don't think, get them through Vegas. He's not yeah. ready that yeah. much of a series. Excellent. Yet, so. um, that combined with the depth of Vegas, I just think they're one of the deepest teams, too. I think I'll give them the slight lead. Uh, this is not going to be anything in five to so six games to Vegas. Yeah. You're, you're taking Vegas? To Vegas? Yeah. I wanted to say a little bit about DeBoer's uh, – decision to put laner in instead of flurry um i don't think DeBoer thinks laner is necessarily the better goaltender i do think that um the laner it's been quite obvious that laner is the one that they're going to go with in the future uh it looks like flurry's on his way out and if that's the case especially somebody like laner laner is an odd bird and he has a tendency to be, um, what's the word, uh, a little bit insecure sometimes. Uh, so <laughs> if you take Laner and say, and put him in above Flurry, that's giving him like so much confidence in the world. If he wouldn't have played, if he wouldn't have played Laner, if he would have played Marc Andre Flurry first, he basically, he would have lost his second goaltender because Laner. As soon as it gets challenged like that, has a tendency to kind of go voodoo. There's been lots of goaltenders out there that didn't have not done well if challenged by another goaltender. It's like better for your backup to have no chance of ever being a number one than having somebody challenge them. Uh, a guy who comes to mind is Ed Belfour. Ed Belfour was a great goaltender, but if you made it, Holtby. Hope he gets challenged by Samsonov or another goaltender, and all of a sudden you can't stop a puck anymore. Sometimes you, some goaltenders need to be babied. 
And Laner seems to be like that. And uh, so it's, but it's hard to watch. I am a huge Marc Andre Fleury fan. Absolutely enormous. My favorite player in the league. This guy is all class. And for him to go through what he's going through right now, he's obviously pained by this. He didn't seem pained by what happened in Pittsburgh. He left there and he went yeah, to Vegas. He, was, he seemed pretty ready to get out of Pittsburgh, I think. <laughs> well, no, he just, they did it in a way that worked, that, that, that he felt okay with. But here, I think he feels slighted here. Like, I think in this way, he really does feel like, hey, what happened to me here? Hello. You know, yeah. it's like coming off the top of the mountain and it's just like, you're bringing this new guy, he's number one and I'm here. It's so fast. Like, at least with Pittsburgh, it was over a season. They could kind of kind of massage him into it and stuff like that. Here is your boom. That's it. Yeah, now, I, you brought up a good point, Steele. How is this going to affect the series against a very strong team? Vegas didn't – Chicago isn't as strong as this Vancouver team. Is, is this – I mean, is this drama going to have any effect at all? Yeah. I'm asking. I, I, I was going to say about Flurry though, before that he, um, he's a guy that I think will always be okay, uh, in the locker room, no matter what I think, um, what, when you were talking, it got me thinking of was Leonard, the points you made about him. That's exactly right. Because he's had, they figured out he has, um, the bipolar disorder and he talked about in all the documentaries i watched of him how he has kind of like you said insecurities at times so putting him in first probably is a way to go in that situation and it's not and also flurry looked off in the game he played they just picked him up and won and he had a rough regular season yeah and he had a off regular season it wasn't like uh Hopey regular season where he was really off this year, but it was a it was a rough. He, had, he was hurt a little bit too, wasn't he? he well, his father died. Yeah, and, his, and I oh, think okay. that might be the other thing that's hurting him right now is he wanted to do this for his dad, right? He wanted to play these playoffs for his dad. He wanted to use that power to go out there and you know that's play for his dad. And I think that's kind of uh, that's what I mean. I know Flurry's not going to be a problem in a room. But the other players are, are kind of looking at Flurry and going, why didn't he get a chance to do it for his dad? You know, maybe that's just in the back of the minds. I don't know. You know, like it's. Well, that's it's, why I picked Vegas, because if Leonard has an off game, what you just said, combined with the fact that Flurry's already ignited to impress because he's annoyed that he's not in is going to make him probably, like I said earlier, be a bat out of hell, and he'll just ignite them like he did in 2017, and he'll just be like, don't worry, boys, I got us. Here we go. Promised land. We're playing, hopefully, us uh, in the Stanley Cup. Uh, Or if not us, since I predicted uh, them on my other brank at Tampa, but I want it to be us. So that'll that'll be uh, interesting. Do you you think it's possible that... Do you think it's possible that DeBoer is setting up this kind of heroics where he knows Laner's going to have a bad game eventually? And then he's going to say, you know what, Flurry, go in there. And if you have a really great game, we'll put you right into the end. And then everybody's getting behind him. Do it for his dad, blah, 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 blah. Laner still feels important because he, he is going to have a bad game from time to time. But they did pick him first. It all makes sense, right? It, it uh, I'm that's kind of seem like that, that's I'm, a good. I, I'm picking Vegas, by the way. But yeah, yeah, but yeah, like you, if you, teams, six, two. I I don't know this Vancouver team, man. It's so resilient. Like I'm I'm like I'm I'm with uh, with Steel here. Honestly, like in my mind, I'm going. I don't know who to pick. Like wow, this argument in my mind. But I have a feeling yeah. this wouldn't this be amazing if if this that we just played out here is exactly what happened. And I, it, I think it could very well happen. This could be the, in what's in DeBoer's mind is he's got this flurry on the back burner. And like you said, Joe, he knows that he's going to like go lights out whenever we put him in. So, yeah. See, I, see, it just goes to prove that all you have to do is sprinkle just a tiny little blood in the water and look at how the sharks circle. Because yeah. all I did was say that there was a little something that was posted out there on Twitter. And I thought and felt that this would be something that's going to decide the series. And look at what we got into. 
Yeah. I mean, I really feel that this is going to affect the series. Look, I'm with you guys all the way. I think Vegas. Look, I picked Vegas to go against Philadelphia. That's that's my quote unquote bracket. Okay, I picked Vegas to be the team out of the West, um, and and Philadelphia to be the team out of the East. Okay, so of course I'm going to root for Vegas, but I still think it's going to be tough because I think of all those things that we just talked about. And and Joe, I think that you made one of the great points too about the fact that if if anything. God forbid, were to happen to Markstrom. Uh, uh, yeah, they don't have to fall back. Uh, uh, Golden yeah. Knights. yeah. Okay, exactly. So at least with the Golden Knights, they have two, they have a one and a one A, right? Yeah. Well, the one, Demko should be a one B. The problem is he, they didn't put him in the best situations yet uh, to improve his career. Uh, and, and, and this is not going to help him either. Yeah, it's not going to help throwing you into the fire against one of the best teams. <laughs> yeah. So that's why it's not really the best situation there. Right. Yeah. yeah. As far as we didn't even really get talking about Vancouver a little bit, we should probably talk about them a little bit here. Well, I think uh, we did. I think we did address the fact that we, we feel that they have enough skill and depth up their lineup. Well, yeah, the biggest uh, key is also Jake. Because Jake's motivated for his contract. You can tell that right now by his play. Markstrom is Jake playing. Jake Tannen? Jake well, no, Tannen. Well, well, Tannen's very good, too, and he has a yeah. contract coming up. Well, actually, I guess yeah, I guess both Jakes are playing for their money. Uh, but, uh, got, yeah, you got the uh, offensive Jake playing for his money, and you got the goaltender Jake playing for his money. But either way, they're both, uh, playing, they're both playing Markstrom, well. Markstrom. Markstrom. Uh, yeah, they're both playing well and probably going to get more money, obviously than their current contract. So that's going to be uh, good for them. But if you keep seeing that, uh, that's really going to help Vancouver because they're getting more and more depth scoring in this playoffs too than they've seen in the regular season, other than just from Pedersen and the Bessers and all those guys of the world. Um, and they're getting it from all guys like even Mott, obviously, in the one game. Jay Beagle scored, of all people. Uh, like, <laughs> they're getting it from all yeah. of them place so i mean that's gonna help them but that's why i think i said six because i feel like vegas is one of the fan like vancouver is also one of the fastest but vegas is one of the fastest and deeper teams in the west where vancouver's this much away from i'm with you like, let's remember though that they did that against a st louis team whose goaltending let them down a lot and that's the reason why i'm let it go in with vegas here is because uh, it's not likely that the goaltending is going to let them let them down. Uh, I think Vancouver is going to be like Steele said. I think Vancouver is going to be a cup contender for the next four four years, five years. Yeah, uh, they lost. Ty- like that. They lost Tyler Myers though, and I'm not really a big fan of their defensive well, depth. I love Quinn Hughes and stuff like that, but uh, I would take at this moment Vegas's defense over theirs. I was going to say on that point, though, that would be if they don't screw up their goalie situation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If yeah, they yeah. screw up their goalie situation, they ain't winning a cup. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> if, they, if they figure that out in the offseason and have I Mark think they'll Trump sign. I think they're going to sign Markstrom. Yeah, yeah, and then they let Demko continue to develop and probably move him eventually, unless you only give Markstrom a two-year contract. Uh, then – you have something there and you have assets eventually coming in. So that would help you in the long run rather than trying to bank off a of Demko who you haven't developed that great yet because you haven't put him into the best situations because you've had Markstrom yet. So you, yeah. so uh, that's why I feel they should re-sign Markstrom. I don't like the whole let's go with Holpe route either that they've been talking about. Maybe we'll get rid of Markstrom to save money and go with Holpe. That's not a good idea either because Markstrom's ascending. Braden Holpe right now, it looks like he's descending or he's either even like he doesn't look like he's so he would have to start ascending again. Mm -hmm. So that's why that's the big caveat there. They're a cup contender if they re-sign Jake and he keeps getting, and I think, well, not if, when he keeps getting better, because I believe he's going to keep getting better. Okay. Well, let's go with some final thoughts still. What do you, what do you final thoughts on this series? I, I, I still look, I, I understand what you guys are. And I think, Based off of what we talked about and based off of everything that we've gone through, I still feel this is an old style kind of game. I'm still feeling like this is going to be one of those run and gun games where you're just going to see lots of goal scoring. 
I just have that feeling. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And it's not going to really matter really – the goalies per se, but – and then I also think you might sprinkle in some of that stuff from from Vegas with Flurry and things like that. So I'm still picking Vegas. I just think it's just going to go seven games. All right. First first series going seven games maybe. And, uh, Joe, what's your final thoughts on this one? Uh, yeah, mine was uh, six games, but I think uh, guys I'll give – I mean, I think you're going to continue to see great depth scoring from these teams. So since uh, Mott got going uh, – he actually, in their last five games, has been their best scorer uh, because yeah. of that two-goal game. Uh, yeah, yeah. But uh, he got going. They're good depth scoring. Riley Smith's always been good for Vegas. I would look out for him to continue to be good. He always steps up in the playoff. Uh, he's a guy that continues to do well. So those are just names that are not always popping on everyone's radar. Radar. Look out yeah. to that I would watch because they continue to play some good hockey in these playoffs. We already mentioned Vertanen because he was a guy I had written down to mention at the end, but we already covered him. So uh, he's another guy. I continue to watch him. Chandler Stevenson's one on the Knights ever since he went to the Knights from Washington uh, has continued to impress and be very good. Same with Ra, uh, Roy or Ra. I don't know how they, Nicholas. Roy. Roy. Yeah, Roy. Okay. Um, there you go. So uh, he does really well in the bottom six there. So, that's uh they've been doing some good things there so that's why i picked vegas by a slight margin but I, that's why i think it'll go six if uh vancouver has issues on defense like they could at times that's the caveat that could make it go five yep yep, yep. yeah and i'm uh i'm with you um i'm a little concerned about vancouver's defense although i have to say since we're mentioning guys that don't get mentioned very often Jordy Ben has come in and played very, very well. I, it's, yep. been, it's been very impressive. I think he's got a contract coming up again, and I'm pretty sure he's going to get himself a raise because uh, he has been very good. Um, I haven't noticed Tyler Toffoli in this series much at all. Uh, they need guys like that to step up, I think, Vancouver. But the thing is with Vancouver is their pushback has been fantastic. Every time they've been down, they've come back up. I've been really impressed with the maturity of this young group. Um, I think... I give the edge to Vegas because, oh, and by the way, I want to also mention that it's very unfortunate that they have to be shackled with Louis Erickson every time they wake up in the morning. Uh, (laughs) I just thought I would throw that in there. The guy's playing top six in the top six. He has zero points in nine games. He's getting paid $6 million a year, and he walks in the dressing room every day like Luchut's acting like he's part of the team when everybody's like, okay, not really, dude. And I think that's an energy I don't like. But um, Vegas, on the other hand, they have very strong veterans. You have Stone, you have Pacioretty, um, just strong, strong leadership there. I don't think they're going to be swayed by this young, up-and-coming, pushback team. And I have a feeling they'll get through. I'm saying Vegas. I'm going to say 7-2 because I'm just that impressed with Vancouver's pushback that they're going to be a tough tough team to crumble down but i could also see it going five as well it, yeah. it's one of those all over the boards here yeah right now. yeah so, i was gonna just say, don't know <laughs> yeah i was gonna say the reason we haven't heard of Tufoli is he only played one game he has a lower body injury is that what it is okay yeah. so he's injured yeah. i don't know how come i didn't know that otherwise that louis up, would uh, probably not be in the i would hope uh, would yeah. not be in the top six. He's the one that's the reason why Louis Erickson is in. Well, there He's we go. The top six. How did I miss that? I watched like, <laughs> Well, now you're everything. set straight, man. The professor sets you straight, bro. I read yeah. everything about hockey constantly all day, and somehow I didn't see that. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> you can pretty much rest assured that the professor will set you straight. Get you straight. That's Max our full forty-two percent, boys and girls. That's all we have to give today. But we have uh, Steel. Why don't you tell them about that that new shiny little website, big website that you got going on there? I know I love it. You can find yeah, all man. my stuff on there. Yeah, for sure. You can definitely follow Professor on on the website and get all the pearls of wisdom on there, too. Uh, Go to the Friends of Steel Flyers for all the links to all of their websites, all of their Twitter contacts, and all of their videos and all their great content. Uh, I'm Steel Flyers uh, on Twitter at SteelFlyers52. Come to the website, www.steelflyers.com, for all your Steel Flyers podcast needs. Joe? Uh, yeah, you can uh, find us at a true underscore Philly sport for the podcast on Twitter, uh, me at JJ Borick 26. And again, on steelflyers.com and flyers nitty gritty running for the flyers 
N O T Heroics and Pub Sports Radio. And uh, enjoy the great hockey. There's two great games today: Bruins yeah. Lightnings, Canucks and Golden Knights. And check out this series we did on the Bruins and uh, Lightning that we did yesterday. So uh, absolutely. And as uh, we always say, like, comment, hit the bell. Uh, I'll put that keep down. Doing in the what comments you're doing. Section. Yeah. Yeah, all the cool kids are doing it. You know that. Have a great day. Lots of Peace love out. to you. Thanks.